Okay, welcome to a little vintage fly tying. It's going to be part of a new series that I'm doing along with my catch and tie series that I have a couple boxes of flies that were tied in the 1960s, 1970s by my father. And some of these flies were tied by myself. A bunch of those flies were well used, but we're going to recreate them. Two fly boxes of my father's have a mixture of dry, wet flies and some streamers. So we're going to have a little fun with this. First one we're going to start with is one that I don't know the name of it. It might be the earliest version of like a uh, little warm pattern. In fact, I can't find it anywhere, any book. What it is, it's basically it's deer hair. Tied into the style maybe of a little inchworm. Might be even his own creation. Like I said, from the 60s, 70s. He told me that he started fly fishing with his grandfather. So you can imagine that would have been in the 40s. So let's get to it. What I did already is tack some deer hair. Make this a little quicker. I'm assuming that uh, if you don't know how to stack deer hair that there's plenty of videos on it. Pretty easy to do. Just get a good stacker. A good stacker really helps. Brass so it don't stick to it. We'll lay down a base of thread. We'll go all the way back. Tag end off. About the top of the bend of the hook. You don't really want this one here bending down too much. Bring it all the way back up front. Final stacks. And go ahead. Take your deer hair out. Take out any short hairs that uh, might be. A couple short hairs aren't bad, but you want to make sure you comb out your hair before you stack it. That way it stacks nicely. Okay. Just go ahead and pinch your hair. Lay it just behind the eye of the hook and start to capture it. Right about there, go ahead and wrap it in tight. So you got most of the hairs. I see a couple still short hairs in there. But you want to make some big wraps. Follow it backwards. Backwards. Backwards to about the barb of the hook there. A couple of wraps. And now you want to come back up forward. Overlapping those previous wraps. So it looks pretty. Go ahead and wrap it up a little bit. So now you have all your steer hair. The hook's enclosed. We're going to go ahead and take your whip finish tool and do a quick whip on it. We'll get back to this end here momentarily. I'm going to go ahead and cut your thread off. And I'll be right back. I forgot a 
needle on them. Don't you go anywhere. I am back. I uh, bring everything out to the kitchen table because I don't have any room on my tying desk. So, this is actually a very important part of this fly, this needle. Without this needle, I really couldn't figure out how to continue on making this warm. So go ahead and remove your fly from the hook. Insert this sewing needle. Fly from the vise, not fly from the hook. So now we have the needle and the vise. You get your fly in your hand. Go ahead and with your best precision insert that needle into the back of the fly. Doesn't have to be tight, just tight enough. It's actually pretty easy to do. But what I do need to do is reposition this needle a little bit because I want to have a little finger room in there. Okay. So now you have the needle inserted into the back of the fly. I'm going to get your thread. I'm going to start it back up where you got the midsection of the body here. When you start your thread back up, make sure you overlap the thread before you cut it away. That way you don't lose your thread. Okay. From here, just go ahead, pull your do your hair back. Give it one big wrap inside of the hook there. Now outside of the hook, just make big spirals. Don't worry about that uh, spinning around on you a little bit. That's fine. It'll happen. And when you get about to the stopping point there, go ahead and a couple wraps. And now what you want to do is bring it back. Overlapping the turns that you made going back. And back inside of the hook. And from here you will go ahead and whip finish. This whip finish tool is a little bigger than my previous one. Well, not my previous one, but my other one. This is the one I use all the time. Very comfortable with this. This big one is, uh, I think it's an Umqua. But it's uh, just a little more harder to handle. But it gets the job done on these big projects like this. It gets right in there. Okay, so now you got a whip midpoint. Go ahead and put your thread away. And if you want, you can go and trim up a couple of these little short hairs that popped out on me. Just to pretty it up a little bit. Take your fly. Push it right off the needle. Take your needle out and you're done with that. Put your fly back in your vise. And go ahead and trim that up a little bit. We want this to have a black head. That's the original fly had a black head. So we're going to make this the black head. Now what you want to do on a tail, I actually like the tail, but the original fly did not have a tail on it. It's just a warm pattern. So go ahead and snip that off. If you snip that off, you want to go ahead and super glue it. Just 
just to give it a little extra durability. I tried this out and it does not float, but it doesn't sink very quick either. So I bet with a little bit of uh, weight on your tippet there, tie this maybe a foot the next foot off your weight, it'll float uh, nicely in the bottom column of the water there. Just be bopping along. Just a little bit of super glue in the mid there. Go ahead and take uh, your darker thread. Start it on there. And go ahead and make a nice dark head here. This is a, I don't think it's quite black thread. I think it's called a dark gray, but it's black enough for me. Hopefully black enough for you. And I'll go ahead and trim up any stragglers, which don't seem to be too many. Go ahead and get your whip finisher out. Looks good. An old Sally Hansen's. Now, obviously, that more bigger clump of deer hair that you use, the fatter the flies are going to be. This is a pretty thin one here. I've tied them a little fatter. Here's one a little fatter here. When I was practicing, I even used a little different color of thread. The thing is, you use different color of thread, you better be very precise with your wraps or it's going to look ugly. So, keep that in mind. And what I thought was nice, I got this orangish reddish deer hair. That boy to come out nice. Hope that able to see that. I think I'm going to tie me some up like this. And in experimenting, I tied up some of these. Say, tell you what, let me just take this out of the way because I'm actually pretty proud of this one here. I want you to see it. Look at that. I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit for you. Alright, I think it's a focus. Close enough there. Alright, I came up with this. Same body, just put uh, a little hackle on it from a grizzly saddle. A little bead. And how about that? I think I'll fish this one too. Alright, so there you have it. Started off with the original fly that my father had tied back in the early 70s. And uh, this is it. It's a little shorter. Okay, well, thank you very much. Appreciate uh, you checking this out. If you like it, go ahead and give me a subscribe and give me a like. We'll uh, we'll go through this whole entire uh, box of flies if we can. A lot of them, the old. Uh, See that are familiar, a lot of dry flies, atoms, different mayfly patterns. We're going to tie them off if we can. Alright, thanks for watching.